The Mendian Honey Eye Falls Lima Sentinel welcomes you to this edition of the Mayor's and Supervisor's Weekly Update, brought to you by... Each week, our community makes history. Each week, you make history. And each week, there's only one source to turn to for the first take on history. You know what that is? Subscribe to the Sentinel right now to discover the history being made in your own backyard. The Mendian Honey Eye Falls Lima Sentinel. More than just your news, it's your history. Hi, everybody, and welcome again to this week's version of the Mayor's and Supervisor's Update. I'm Chris Carosa, publisher of the Men in Honey Eye Falls Lima Sentinel. And each week at Sunday, we bring you the Mayor's and Supervisors and what they have to say. Today, we're going to start out with number one, Jerry. Jerry and Rush, how are we doing there? Oh, my gosh. I, I think Rush is number one. I don't know if Jerry is. And... Uh... I think Rush is the best kept secret in Western New York. You know that. But I will say that Jerry, having had the COVID, is on the mend. It's been a long time, but I'm feeling better every day. And I'm looking up to being able to, be able to run around some track someplace in the spring. In the meantime, I want to remind people that we have a town board meeting coming up. February 24th, 7 p.m. You can participate by Zoom. You don't have to go out in the cold or ice. You can just log on with your computer. The website is on the town website or the log on is on the town website. Well, hope to see a lot of people there. Um, I will also mention at this time that we are in the process of developing a new user-friendly website, an up-to-date user-friendly website. And uh, that, that is being coordinated basically by Kathy Hankins and <clears throat> Amber Corbin. And I can't wait to see the results of that. I'd also mention at this time the library roof project. We had a little setback yesterday. Um, one section of the roof where it joins with the former town hall sprung a leak, but the contractors are here today working on it. And I'm pretty sure that they have it wired and will prevent the leak from occurring again. That's a good thing. Also, uh, we have a new finance director that we hired. Uh, her name is Kristen, Christine Piera. And she will be starting on Monday. So if you want to meet Christine Piera, come in on Monday and introduce yourself. That would be great. I would also mention at this time that Christine uh, inherits a excellent foundation of finance for the town of Rush, um, led by Dan Klimek, our retiring finance director. And uh, we are in excellent shape and hope to remain that way for the next couple of years and beyond. I want to mention the <clears throat> LWRP, which means the Local Waterfront Revitalization Project. We are partnered with the town of Henrietta. And I won't bore you with a lot of detail, but basically, this will result in the construction of a walking trail along the east bank of the Genesee River from up by the canal all the way to Route 251 in Rush. For those of you who like to walk, it will be a wonderful trail because it goes through a lot of wildlife areas on, on uh, both sides of the river. And also you'll be able to observe the river, which is not easy to do these days, but we will have that asset in the future. And I know a lot of people will take uh, advantage of that. Uh, most of you probably got notice that the Monroe County in Bloom uh, project is back on the menu for 2021. Last year it got postponed because of the uh, COVID but hopefully it'll be back this year and we can show our colors through flowers in all the towns in the county. Um, <clears throat> I, I did wanna mention that 
our one of our newest town board members, Ryan Lang, had an emergency medical problem, and uh, he will be out of circulation for probably the next six to eight weeks. So if you know Ryan, send him a get well wish and uh, help him get along with that. He recently took on the responsibility of leading the comprehensive plan development and uh, hopefully some people in the community, we've already got quite a slate, but the more people you have for developing a comprehensive plan, the more diverse it will be. And we're hoping that more people will show an interest. Um, probably don't have to mention COVID. Uh, I don't wanna jinx myself by mentioning COVID, but uh, we, we still got this problem in our general population. And I hope people are doing everything and anything they can do to help slow or stop the spread of that disease. Having had it, I don't want it again, and I don't want anybody else to get it. So I'll leave you with that thought. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Jerry. And those are very good words that we should all consider. Up next, Eileen in the village of Scottsville. Eileen, how are things going in Scottsville? Things are going well here. Thank you. Um, we've just got our sales tax distribution uh, information for the fourth quarter. And it was down a little bit, but we did okay. Um, our sales tax distribution was 130,000 and change. And as a opposed to last year, 135,000. So it's down a bit, but we did, we did okay. And we had always budgeted uh, lower than we expected so that hopefully the impact of the loss of sales tax revenue won't hit us too hard. Uh, the next thing is, speaking of websites, I have a meeting this upcoming week about redoing our website. As, like Jerry, we want to um, update our website, make it more user-friendly and get on there. And we've, um, we have someone coming in that we're gonna talk about doing just that this week. Uh, another meeting I'm going to have this week with a planning board member and a DPW member with our uh, engineer from Larson Engineering is about our solar panels. We qualify to be a climate smart community. And along with the, that designation becomes some benefits in applying for grants and things like that. So we have a little Zoom meeting with them this week, to find out a little more about that. As for our DPW, of course they were busy this past week with the storm. Luckily, I, I, from my perspective, it wasn't as bad as I was expecting but it still dumped a lot of snow on us and our GPW crew was very busy. And again, I thank them for all their hard work during times like this. Uh, and as we've, um, I stated last week, we have, they have purchased a new one ton dump truck and that is being funded by resources we have this year. So that's the good news. And with everything, um, next year, we don't have a lot of equipment we have to buy. We only have another chainsaw so far. So um, that's looking good. But I think we have to look forward to the future and what the needs will be in terms of equipment in the future for the DPW. Uh, down the road a few years, there's some other trucks that we probably will need to replace. So we need to start planning ahead. So as we build this year's budget, we need to build those equipment reserves so that when something is needed, anything is needed, uh, whether it's a truck or anything else, we have the money to offset the cost. So that's one of our goals in doing the budget this year is building those reserves back up. Secondly, in the past uh, summer, the DPW worked on sidewalks. They got a, a lot of our sidewalk work done. Uh, they, the DPW does want to get back to North Road after that road project we had this past summer. They wanna go through and 
do are able to do some sidewalks on North Road, but they've decided not to do it this coming summer to give the residents of North Road a break after having all that construction going on last summer and just getting lo their lawns back in shape. So we're gonna put that off for maybe a year. But what we wanna do in the coming summer is work on roads, get the roads resurfaced, um, not, re not fully, but you know, put a, a layer down um, we want to do slurry, um, sewer flushing and get the sewers flushed and work on the catch basins. There's a lot of work we need in our sewer systems and our drainage areas. So they want to build, they want to work on that this coming summer. And I've just lost everybody. You're still there. <laughs> okay. I, yeah, I couldn't see anybody. So I was thought, I hope I haven't lost them. Um, so we're planning in our budget for those things and I've asked the DPW to uh, get ready for the budget what the, the uh, materials they're going to need, uh, any rentals they need to do to accomplish this so that we can do have a good plan for the coming summer. And like everyone else, um, we're still doing things remotely. The building that we are in is still closed to the public and by appointment only. Uh, it seems to be working very well. Um, our last board meeting was remote. And for the time being, especially with the building closed, things for the public will probably be remote. So that's about it for Scottsville and thanks for the opportunity. Thank you, Eileen. And, and I'll just reiterate about that storm that we had. You know, it was amazing. It didn't really seem like a snowstorm, but it sure produced a lot of snow. So, <laughs> let's turn it over to Rick Mill, Mayor of Honeyway Falls. How are we doing in Honeyway Falls, Rick? Oh, we're doing good, Chris. Thanks again for the opportunity. It's great to see everyone. Five minutes. Um, we're, uh, you know, I'm going to actually kind of tag along with... Uh, a couple of the other comments that have been made. Uh, it's it's funny because we're actually working on our website as well. Um, you know, we, we created a website internally a, a number of years ago. We thought it was really nice and it, it looks okay, but the situation we're in with the pandemic and the way we're doing our meetings and more information we want to get out, we found how really uh, user unfriendly our website is. And uh, so we're going to work on that as well. So uh, that's, that's going to be an interesting process because depending on how you do it, they're not cheap. And uh, if you want them to be good, it takes a little bit of effort for sure. Um, also, as um, uh, my friendly mayor in Scottsville had just said, uh, we did receive our sales tax numbers as well. And like Eileen, uh, we were down slightly, but not too bad. Uh, overall, I think we're we're going to be down, uh, I'm guessing, around ten or $15,000 from last year overall. Um, we actually had one quarter that was up from the previous year. So, um, you know, we're, we're doing okay. And, and like all my other, uh, my other uh, counterparts here, you know, we, we budget uh, a little bit low, um, hoping that we're going to be a little bit high on the receivables. Um, but it it, it is a little bit lower than anticipated or, th or that we had hoped for. Um, we also are, are happy to see the continued downward trend uh, in the COVID positivity rates overall. Um, certainly the holiday rush and those gatherings, et cetera, pushed an uptick um, and, and we've subsided, but it's certainly, as Jerry said, and he knows very well, it's, it's not gone. Um, and while vac vaccinations have, uh, been made have not been as available as possible or expected. Uh, progress is being made, right? And uh, we're getting more shots plus safety practices. I think we're doing better overall. So as has been said, we got to keep those masks on. We got to keep our social distancing and, um, and just continue to be safe. Uh, village office will be fully staffed and fully open March 1st. Uh, we are going uh, to remain uh, virtual for our meetings as far as residents coming in, but we are going to start working back towards in-person for staff for our meetings um, or a combination of the two. But we really want to try to be a village hall for our meetings. Um, we, we 
the virtual meetings are going okay, but we, we need a little bit of face-to-face -face time. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna see how that works, but we'll we'll start pushing the the uh, open meetings a little bit more in March. Um, we're very concerned uh, still, and I think I mentioned this last week or in my minutes from last week, and we're very concerned with the governor's executive budget. Uh, AIM funding slated to be 20% lower um, than before. Uh, CHIPS funding is slated to be even, but the, um, the $65 million, which is uh, set up for extreme weather road repairs, um, that currently is not in the governor's budget. And um, we really, as municipalities, we can't afford uh, to take a loss uh, in state funding. So we're concerned about that. We've been talking, uh, I've had a lot of meetings with Assemblywoman Burns and Senator Brook. They have both been very open and are fully supportive of the town and village's needs. Um, they've, they've been absolutely fantastic. Um, and I think they're going to be very, they've very clearly voiced their support of us. And I think they'll be very vocal and um, hopefully their uh, one house budget. So the governor's put together his budget. Now the senators and the assembly uh, put together their one house budgets. And that's what they use to bargain with the governor to get the final budget. Um, they, I'm very confident they'll put the AIM funding back in, they'll probably put the uh, extreme weather funding back in and we'll see where it goes. Um, you know, one of the things that's happened um, over the last few years is AIM funding, which is unrestricted funding. So this is money that we get as municipalities and we can do anything we want with it. Uh, it can fund road projects, it can fund sidewalk projects, although that's kind of what CHIPS is for as well. But if you have a park project or whatever, you can use this funding for pretty much anything you want. Um, the governor has uh, changed that. So where it was a line item in the state budget, he has now um, been taking a cut, if you will, um, off the top of the sales tax revenue. So whatever the number is, um, the AIM funding is taken off the top of sales tax revenue before it comes to us. Then they give the sales tax revenue to the counties to distribute to the municipalities. So we're getting less in that sales tax revenue. And then the AIM funding is supposed to be made up. Uh, we're supposed to get the same amount, but that's supposed to be made up by the counties. Um, so in a sense, the money that we get from AIM funding, we're actually taking our own money that we've paid in through, and we should have been getting through sales tax. The AIM funding should have been on top of that, and it's not. So we're really taking a hit. And uh, NICOM and also the Association of Towns are, are, are really trying to fight this because it's, it's just not a good policy on the governor's, uh, on the governor's point. So hopefully that's going to get changed. Um, the other thing that I think is really interesting is it, it sounds like the adult use cannabis uh, is, is got a real good shot to move forward this year of, of that, those laws changing. And I'm not saying it's, that's good, bad, or indifferent, but when you look at the state that our state finances are in, um, as well as our county and, and municipal uh, finances, the um, dispensing of adult use cannabis um, is a real um, pos positive aspect of making more money. Um, again, not here to say whether it's right, wrong, or indifferent, but if that's going to move forward, what our legislators have to vote, uh, fight for, and we have to fight for, is if it's going to happen, we need some say locally in whether or not we want our municipality to be able to have a dispensary in its community. Um, and we have to have some sort of knowledge and input on receiving some of the, that funding. Um, it's really not known how that's going to work out. And what's been proposed is that only cities with over 500,000 people and counties can determine if their counties are going to allow cannabis dispensing and agriculturally uh, grown cannabis um, in their counties. 
And um, we want to say in that. And we want to say in how much of that sales tax revenue we're going to get. If it's going to happen, we need to uh, be able to get some of that money as well, because locally, we are the ones who are going to have to um, follow through on this. So if, there, if there's a dispensary in the village of Honeyway Falls, we're going to have to watch over it. We're going to have to make sure uh, they're doing what they're supposed to do. And we don't have a police force, but working with Monroe County, we're going to have to police it. It's not the county that's going to do it overall, and it's not the state that's going to do it. So if we're going to have to work and see this stuff move forward, we need to reap some of those benefits as well. So that's something that's um, you know really going to be interesting to see how that, that goes through. Um, and with that, everything else has been uh, you know pretty good. Um, all of our staff has been healthy overall, and um, we're glad to see that Jerry's back, and and we hope that uh, everyone else remains healthy as well. So thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Rick. And now, guys, you didn't tell me that I had the wrong background on. So <laughs> that was the other publication. This is the publication we're working with this time. <laughs> All right. So, Mike, town of Lima. How are we doing there? Uh, things are progressing along with the elevator project here in Lima. Uh, painting and trim is going on. Uh, the mechanical crew will be back in next week to finish the mechanical parts of the elevator, add the much anticipated uh, phone line access and all that. Still on track for next month. On Tuesday, February 23rd, there will be a special meeting of the Livingston County Board of Supervisors to commemorate the occasion of the Livingston County Bicentennial. Uh, attendance via Zoom is welcome to the public and the instructions to attend the meeting are up on the Livingston County website. It's at 1.30 in the afternoon. I, for uh, just a commentary on the taxes, um, county taxes in Livingston County, every dollar that's collected goes to New York State for mandates, e everyone. Um, there are other revenue streams that come from sales tax and mortgage tax and, and those things a portion of those also goes to New York State to cover the mandates. And then the balance is what's left for the county budget. Um, the mandates uh, seem to never go away. And as Rick was talking about, uh, you know, they've figured out a way to actually take a portion of our sales tax, get rid of a grant, use the sales tax money to give it back to us. It's all just kind of a shell game. Um, does not seem to be uh, any relief in this coming budget either for it. Livingston County also has announced the first impression program. Uh, if you have a business in Livingston County, there is a uh, signage program, uh, signs, facades, uh, public art and streetscapes and uh, digital first impressions on your website. Uh, awards are up to $5,000, and uh, there are information sessions coming up on the 22nd, the 24th, and the 25th of February, and all of the information is up on the uh, Livingston County website in the economic development area. Uh, if you are a business owner and you're interested and uh, can't locate it for some reason, uh, just call me here at the town hall, 582-1130, and I'll make sure you get the info that you need. Um, if you travel on routes 5 and 20 east of Lima, you know how dangerous the intersection at Doran Road and Bragg Street can be. Uh, we have had 16 accidents there in the last five years and uncounted number of near misses. Uh, last fall, I engaged DOT to get into the queue for a study and the study is going on right now. Uh, to see what can be done with the intersection as far as re-engineering it to improve sight distances, slow the traffic down, uh, et cetera. Uh, to go with that, uh, Elizabeth Parmalee, one of our Doran Road residents, has started an online petition. If you are someone who travels that corridor, if you're coming through there to go to Lima to pick up your kids from the elementary school, or if you are a local resident that's through there all the time, 
uh, please consider signing the online petition. Uh, we'll be using that to add weight to our case to get the state to fund the reconstruction of 5 and 20 in that section. I, it is out on Facebook right now, and if you do uh, want to look for the link, it is also going to be on the front page of the town website. We also have still the grassroots effort uh, to help the HFL veterans with a partial school tax exemption. Uh, the letter to sign and send uh, is in my supervisor's post on the town website. Copies of it are also available here at the town hall. Uh, we also have copies in this week's Penny Saver in yellow, and next week it'll be in the Sentinel. Uh, the cost of the exemption is 3.3 cents per thousand, and that 3.3 cents is the least we can do for our veterans. Uh, please sign your copy and send it in today. That's all I've got, Chris. Thanks, Mike. Todd, West Bloomfield, what's cooking there? Thank you, uh, Mike. I just want to clarify. So uh, West Bloomfield residents can participate in the petition or the survey for the uh, Doran Bragg intersection because it's a state um, initiative or they would be paying for it. Uh, anybody that you know, even thinks about traveling through that area can certainly okay. sign that petition. I, I just want to clarify, I would encourage anyone, I've been involved in a number of those near misses, traveling quite frequently on 5 and 20, heading west out of West Bloomfield, so fully endorse and support any effort that can be done at that intersection. Um, like my peers have said, the sales tax revenue that came into the town in, in, in Ontario County over the course of 2020 was not nearly as bad it has been, as had been predicted. Um, I think for us, it was only an approximate 3% drop over the entire calendar year. Um, still a hit, but not nearly as bad as we were thinking it was going to be in that uh, May, June, July kind of time frame. Um, Town Hall remains open by appointment only. Um, and to our planning board, we had one planning board member who has moved out of town and unfortunately had to resign. So we are looking for um, interested residents to apply to be on the planning board. Um, and our planning board clerk has also submitted a letter of resignation. So we're looking for a clerk for the planning and zoning board. Um, any interested parties can submit information either to me or through the town website. Um, just click on the link there. Um, we will be looking to work on our comprehensive plan over the summer. So we'll be looking for interested residents to participate. Um, and as been said before, the more people who participate in a comprehensive plan committee in that review process, the more different viewpoints you can get, um, working on smaller subgroups to focus on very specific things like, you know, zoning or subdivisions or parks or anything like that makes it easier for everyone who participates. So strongly encourage participation in that. Um, from a county perspective, I wanted to mention I've been spending a lot of time working with the sheriff and a group um, on the police reform collaborative for the plan that's due to the governor by April 1st. There should be a version of that up on the Ontario County Sheriff's uh, website by Monday of next week. Um, and at our County Board of Supervisors meeting last night, one of the items that involved a lot of discussion um, is the fees that the Uber, Grubhub, DoorDash, et cetera, are charging to restaurants. My understanding is that Monroe County has already either passed or is in the process of passing some legislation to minimize those fees to 15% for delivery and I think 5% for pickup. Um, we heard from several restaurateurs who are facing fees that are over 30%. Um, and so these are often smaller restaurants, not chains um, that really can't afford to hire their own drivers. Um, so we are going to be working on some legislation. There will be um, an emergency order from the chairman of the board just to try to put that in place for uh, five day period of time while it goes through the committee process. Um, that will give uh, Uber, Grubhub, DoorDash, whomever, you know, the opportunity to participate in public hearings, et cetera. Um, it's a, it was a long discussion because there's always that perspective of whether government should be really involved in private enterprise. Um, but the feeling from the board was that this is something that we need to make sure that we're protecting our residents and our restaurateurs um, 
from those extremely high fees, some of which seem to have gone up. And then also for our rural communities, whether those kind of delivery services um, have the opportunity to really have an exorbitantly high fee. Uh, we had also a, a resolution passed just for everyone's awareness on the video lottery terminals, more specifically to Farmington. Um, this comes back to some of the other comments in regards to the governor's budget. Um, they are looking to hold back all of the money from Ontario County and from the town of Farmington to the tune of almost $2 million for the video lottery terminal at the racetrack in Farmington. So we're sending a letter to um, kind of reinstall that funding to the town of Farmington and to the county, uh, primarily to pay for the roads and the infrastructure that supports that racetrack. Um, in regards to vaccine, the, the COVID vaccines, the weather held back uh, some of the deliveries. And so some of the vaccination sites were slowed down a little bit this week. We're still working through the 1A and 1B folks for vaccines. Um, if you have an appointment, make sure that you're checking to get an update. There have been instances where you know the, the morning appointments have been canceled, but the afternoon ones have continued. I think essentially trying to continue any folks who got the first dose that they are getting their second dose because um, it's not safe to push them off or folks looking to get their first shot can maybe be delayed a week or so um, so that there's enough doses to get uh, a second dose in the future. Um, big thanks to the highway department. The storm has said was a little bigger maybe than anticipated. It came at a very slow, steady pace, but um, thank you to the highway department for their um, efforts. On a personal note, I would point out that the unemployment insurance fraud racket continues. Um, I've had a conversation with a sheriff's investigator. Um, I believe that the current number is about $5.6 billion in unemployment insurance fraud. We're seeing it at the town level, at the county level. Uh, someone filed a claim in my name, which is why I can point out the fact that I'm aware of it is a problem. Um, the suggestion is make sure that you're using two-factor authentication on any of your devices and make sure that you're checking through all of the credit agencies and staying on top of your particular profile um, just so that you're aware if anyone is filing any claims or anything using your social security number, et cetera. Um, other than that, it's nice to see everyone again and thank you again for the time. Thank you, Todd. Does anybody have anything else that they might have uh, forgotten to add? Seeing none, I want to thank you all for participating in this week's Mayors and Supervisors Update and remind all our listeners and viewers that we're here every Sunday at 1 o'clock on your favorite social media platform. Bye-bye for now. I know. Imagine yourself communicating with a difference. Pandimensional Solutions helps you do this. Whether live spectator events, taped broadcasts, or real-time audience-engaging programs, you can benefit immediately from the tools Pandimensional Solutions will share with you. Do you want to make a difference? Contact us at pandimensional.com.